Hey people, it's me again. So anyways, one of the things I wanted to mention here is from uh, Styx's uh, latest video. He was also highlighting the more of the silver linings from the Biden administration there. And one of the biggest silver linings here is one of the things I had said before multiple times is that when it comes to the progressive stack, you know, the 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 AOCs and Bernie, they're gonna be the biggest detriment to the Biden administration as far as that goes. And one of the bigger problems would be is because of how the election results are questionable at best, you know, as far as that goes, that's going to unite the Republicans against Biden, you know. And the biggest problem here is that Biden has to walk a fine line between who he should try to placate to, you know, whether if it's the establishment or the progressives, <laughs> you know, and the worst case scenario, if he does not back the establishment, the establishment could, could screw his chances as far as in the next for I mean, in the next half of his presidency as far as that goes or find a way to get rid of him you know whether if it's by impeachment or other things of that sort and then install Kamala Harris as president but then she'll probably become uh, ineffective and unpopular at best as far as that goes yeah and one of the things I had completely forgot to mention that also kind of screws up the Democrats' chances in 2024. You know, because there's, there is more Democrats that are up for re-election in 2024 than the Republicans. You know, and if... Biden does a horrible job as president or Carmel Harris that screws up their chances in 2024. Yeah. Because considering with the 2022 midterms that's most likely going to get towards uh, uh, Republicans and in that sense, you know, and most likely, I think the Republicans will pick up maybe about two or three seats, although well, there isn't really like a whole lot of Democrats that are up for re-election in 2022, as far as what's in the Senate, you know. So that is kind of the thing here. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, one of the things here that I was going to have to add on to it is that in an event if somehow Biden uh, kicks the bucket, you know, it, it'll probably end up being almost like that movie Weekend at Bernie's, if anybody has ever watched that movie will know what I'm talking about. You know, have this whole weekend at Biden's. You know, which is which would be kind of a bit hilarious as far as that goes. But... Depending on how things are going to go here, it's not just um, the, the Democrats that are going to be in dire straits it's also going to be the republicans in some ways but i think it's just going to be 
more or less an anti-establishment on on uh, both ends there. You know what I mean? Considering what has Trump brought, there was more of an anti-establishment candidate back then. And um, what Tim Pohl and a couple of other people had assert that if the Republicans abandon Trump and then revert back to their old ways, you know, then they're finished. Yeah. Just as much as, like, the case with the Democrats, you know, for that matter, you know, that they're kind of going back to their old ways and that might cause a lot of problems for certain people there. You know what I mean? But considering the um, case with like the 2024 presidential election here and the, and the process there, if, uh, if Biden does a horrible job or or Harris does a horrible job, then it's going to be a shoe in for any Republican, for that matter. Yeah. And I mean, whether if it, or if it Donald Trump decides to take his hand, throw his hand in the ring in 2024 and say, I told you so, you know, and then we end up having like another Grover Cleveland, you know. But if not, there's a possibility that the Don Jr. or Eric Trump could throw their hat in the ring, you know, either one of them. And then other contenders could also be Rand Paul or Marco Rubio for the Republicans, you know. And then the other, uh, the other thing there is then what does the Democrats will have as far as for 2024? You know, we could have um, Elizabeth Warren, you know, as far as that goes, or um, or uh, Koblich her or or maybe a couple of other people, but I'm just not really exactly certain who would be the one that could rose to prominence as far as that goes. But it's one of those things I had said the other day when it comes to Trump, you know, that he will now be a kingmaker, and then he could probably have enough sway to push the Republicans in a more better direction there. Because considering what has happened with, like, the election so far, you know, the Republicans have, have gotten a huge uh, political victory in that sense, you know. In, and I think even in, in a more moral victory, you know, by kind of proving to people that that hey they're not the party of racists or bigots anymore and that basically takes away the the Democrats best weapon of attack which is calling anybody who disagrees with them an ist or a phobe as far as that goes when we have so many people who are black, Latino, Asian, and whatnot voting for Trump. Yeah? So, in, in, in all cases, you know, when it comes to this social justice warrior far left ideology, it is more hypocritical in some ways. Because in in the thing I have mentioned multiple times here when I talk about them is is that they're the real racists. 
they're the real bigots here. You know, as far as that goes. You know what I mean? Well, when it comes to, like, the Republicans, you know, I mean, sure, there's probably some people that are still that way, you know, but that's just a real small vocal minority. But the problem here is when it comes to um, the likes of AOC and Elian Omar, Rashida Tlaib, Ionia Presley, you know, they're the ones that are like, that are uh, taking control of the Democratic Party and making the Democratic Party look completely bad, you know, as far as that goes. And thus, it caused a lot of people who were, who were dis, uh, was it like disaffected by the party itself to vote for Trump vote for Republicans as far as that goes. You know what I mean? So, and in some ways, you know, considering, you know, what I was talking about earlier with, like, the election there, I always kept saying that Trump was going to win simply because I was... Uh, being cautiously pessimistic about things. Yeah? But considering the the last new the last couple of tricks up Trump is in his sleeve don't work, you know, whether if it's trying to uh, get a contingent election or other things of that sort, you know, that's probably is very likely to happen, you know, but it isn't really a total loss if Trump is no longer president there, you know, considering the fact that a lot of those people are going to have buyer's remorse when it comes to Biden, you know, within like the first month or two or whatever, and then he's just going to become, come on, unpopular by the end of the summer and assuming if the economy is intact because of you know what that just remains to be seen but considering with the whole thing here that's also going to cause a lot of ramifications for the democrats there in in the 2022 midterms, you know, as like another factor to weigh in, you know, whether if his Biden is going to really be be a horrible president, and or Carmel Harris, and the way they're handling the whole pandemic so far, and not not uh, airing it. Uh, and then, I mean, then trying to uh, take advantage of of the situation there, you know? So it just begs me to kind of think as far as what's going to happen in the next uh, few uh years as far as that goes so anyways I guess that's uh, probably it until next time so talk to you guys later